Yo, it's your boy MM2K back again. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Hey, yo, what the hell is going on here? I am part of the PNTS network, but that's not MM2K. Let's, let's, let's fix this. Okay. All right. Now that's MM2K. All right. Hey, yo, um... As the chat fills up, I appreciate you. Hey, Snow Bunny, what's going on, baby? What's going on? We're going to do it today. <laughs> We're going to do the damn thing today. All right, let me get out here. Let me share this. Let me just do one thing before we get rolling. And while we get rolling, I just want to let everybody know that I, I, I appreciate you joining me here, um, which is the official channel for the Hard Knock Digital Culture. You know what I mean? Uh, we're, we're highlighting gritty gaming content, gritty cinema, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, gritty anime as well. You know, uh, we, 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 we're at a state, we're at a point to where all that's being attacked. You know, everybody wants you to be, show the artsy dartsy side. Yo, what's up, Mika Dawn? They want you to show the artsy dartsy side uh, of everything. You know what I mean? And, and, and. You know, you have these big execs that are trying their best to kill the momentum of the gritty stuff, you know. And I don't mind the more artsy-dartsy stuff being highlighted and showcased. But there's a difference between expanding and purging. And what we're seeing here is we're seeing a big purge. One that I don't like, to be honest with you. So I've dedicated this channel to highlighting those forms of entertainment you know what i'm saying the type of stuff that i grew up on that i grew up to appreciate and i think you'll grow up to i mean that you'll appreciate as well and uh we're going to highlight again games cinema anime you know and and we got more to come so definitely you don't want to miss what we have in store here but one of the shows that are highlighted here it's called the nro project we have it this is this is the the beta name right now we got an official name coming soon once we get all the graphics and everything done we will have the official rollout you know what i'm saying but i appreciate everybody uh coming through if y'all could do me a huge favor right um as you're filling up retweet this out you know copy this out retweet this out and one more thing that i'm gonna ask you guys to do if you can so kindly if you can so kindly opine before we get started here, because I'm not, I'm not going to waste any time with this, man. We're going, we're going to stop the bull crap. All right, uh, right here in the chat, I am dropping the free messaging link, and then you can also see it on the page as well, right? So what that is is that gives you the ability while I'm going through my spill, because I got a lot of, you know, uh, um, screens and stuff that I'm going to be navigating through. While I'm going through my spill, you can leave a message for me. 
on the free messaging app, it doesn't cost you a dime. It just costs you a couple of clicks. Okay. And that way I can take your message, read it live on air and we can discuss it and go over it. And I, you know, and, and then we can continue on afterwards, but that gives you premier, uh, um, uh, notification to me because like I said I'm navigating through different screens I got I got a lot of receipts to show y'all today I got a lot of receipts now what what has spawned this because as I made notification of this on social media that I was doing this I had a lot of people tell me mm2k you're only doing this because you're upset that uh 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 you're upset because Phil Spencer, you know, agreed to give away the rights to Alan Wake back to Remedy? No, absolutely not. I've also heard, hey, you know, as far as I said, you know, what we're trying to do on this channel as far as gritty entertainment, I've also heard that, hey, you ain't wasn't no Xbox fan for no gritty entertainment. You just like to play Call of Duty and shooters. And I'm like, no. Those couldn't be the two far, those couldn't be the farthest things from each other on the spectrum of what's going on here, but the most inaccurate <laughs> depictions of what we're trying to do here, or what my issue is, you know? And what we got to do is we got to educate ourselves as gamers. Because when we don't educate ourselves, yo, what's up, Graphic God? When we don't educate ourselves, then we just fall into this hyperbole. We sit into these, we sit in these silos and we don't know what the hell we're talking about and we're just regurgitating this stuff and these executives are looking at us and they're like, these people are lost in the sauce. Well, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And before we know it, we ain't getting the, 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 the gaming footprint that we want. They ain't showing stuff on the big stage. This is all happening to us because we're allowing it. We're damage controlling it and we're allowing it. But I'm letting you know, no more. I'm only <laughs> capping for education, for proper communication and standing up for what's right in the community. I am no longer making excuses for anybody. The only flag that I hold is for hardcore gritty gaming. As a gamer, as someone with a lineage of 30 plus years in this community, I'm not holding my trust with any company. I will give kudos to them when they supply the type of games that I'm looking for, but that's it. So as far as Microsoft is concerned with their gaming uh, forte, we're starting from square one. They have to show me before I rep them, you know what I'm saying, in their current state, they have to show me why they can win me over as a consumer. Okay, that's where we're at. PlayStation has to do the same thing. All of them have to do. We're back at square one. I didn't sign up for Windows Gaming. I didn't make the thousands of dollars of investments this generation for Windows Gaming. I made the thousands of dollars of investments for a continuation of what I was getting previous generations. Okay. Now, again, if you wanted to add more to the foray, I don't care. doesn't matter to me. Even if you want to do the streaming thing, I don't care. I came for the gaming footprint, the type of games that you help make or the help the type of games that you made or the type of games that you help influence. And I'm getting none of that. And I'm getting none of that while you're trying to pull the wool over my eyes and the community's eyes and I'm not having it. Now, again, people are saying MM2K, you're in your bag. You're trying to get clicks. You're making this stuff up. None of this stuff is happening. Just have faith and feel. Put something in the collection plate. Sing to the congregation. And I say, hell no. And I won't do it because you, you see the title. You see the title. The danger that is the current Phil Spencer. I want y'all to keep the word current etched in your state of mind. Let me get back to that before this is all said and done. Now, why do I say that? Because Phil Spencer has a mantra to him. Yo, little shady at 26, I appreciate you. Phil Spencer has a mantra to him. Pandafall, what's up? That it's not about putting a spotlight on gaming beyond 
gritty hardcore gaming. It is anti gritty hardcore gaming. So you've created a platform to where its main pillar was that. You want to go to the opposite side of the spectrum, but you want to create this illusion that you're not doing that to just give you time or that I just made some simple mistakes. Just give me time. They put you in this perpetual state of wait because what they're hoping is by 2022, when they reach the 2 billion gamers or they're satisfied by their, their attempt to reach the 2 billion gamers, that you, you're going to leave and they don't give a damn. Hence why uh, your ultimate Game Pass subscription runs out to 2022. If you think about it, with all the studios that they've acquired, with all the work that they're doing, and their stated goal that they want to give you four games, four Xbox games, Xbox in-house games every year. We know those games ain't going to be triple A. You may go through a whole year where it's nothing but double A games. If they're going to do that, they have no intention whatsoever, nor do they feel the need to retain you if you're sitting there looking for these new triple A IPs. They let Alan Wake go. They didn't show their big triple A IP on the stage. They're telling you that gaming is more than headshots and kills. The head of gaming tells you his, his goal, his MO is not to sell you on a console. What else do you need? But again, people want to sit in their own vacuum and they want to believe what they want to believe. They got a lot of arguments out here. They got a lot of arguments. And we're going to debunk all of them. Paul G, what's up? What is up? Heath Stevens, what's up? And like I said, if y'all want, y'all have any comments throughout this whole process, because we're breaking it down to the very last compound, okay? Leave something in the free messaging app. As so, right here. You know what I'm saying? I'll read it on screen. It'll pop up. It pops up right on the screen, so I can't help but to see it. I will not miss it, and then we'll discuss it live on air. It helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you a thing, so, that, so we appreciate it here. All right, so let's get into it. Let's look at simply what he's provided. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's like, hold on. Phil Spencer has been integral. And some of the most hardcore games that Xbox has opined in. It's just that he's hamstrung. He just got the money. He's, he's, he, 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 he really has an eye for hardcore games. When he has control of it, over it, you, you'll cherish what he gives you. <laughs> mm. And God bless my good brother, Post Up. I love him to death. But Post Up had my sugar diabetes up to a thousand. Because he was the one, he was one of the ones spilling this garbage. And I love him to death. But when I stumbled upon what Phil Spencer was bringing in-house when he was promoted to head of Xbox Studios. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. Hey, 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 look, can you, can you do me a favor? Can you roll that beautiful bean footage? Oh, yes, I can. This right here, my friends, is a list of Xbox exclusives and PlayStation exclusives, right? Now, with that said, I want you guys to focus primarily on the games that Phil Spencer had released under his watch when he became head of the stu of the gaming studios in 2009. Now let me let me zoom this a little bit just in case you can't see it. Let me zoom it in. Okay, get it to 150. I think that's better. You guys should be able to see it now. Let me translate. Okay. And let me know if I need to make that bigger. All right. So here's the deal. In 2009 Here's what was released. Halo Wars, 
Halo ODST, Ochimbara Bikani Samurai Squad, Magna Carta 2, Forza Motorsport 3, Lips number one hits. What the hell is that? <laughs> Indy 50 Evolution, Race Pro, Stopped and Cubed. But you're like, hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. What's wrong with that? Well, let's go, let, let's go back a little bit. Let's go, let me do this, let me do this. 2008, just a year before, we had Lost Odyssey, Cold Ascent, Two Human, Infinite Discovery. We had Viva, P Viva Pinata, you know what I'm saying? The stuff for the, for the artsy. But we had Fable 2, Gears of War 2, Banjo Kazooie. We had two Dance Dance Revolutions, Kingdom Under Fire Circle of Doom. Oh, that was my game. Operation Darkness, that was my game too. Sport Spectral Fortress, Zoids, Guilty Gear 2, Lips. You're in the movies. Naruto Broken Bond. Do you see the difference? The difference in day makes. Let's go a year before that. Halo 3, Forza, Crackdown, Tenchu, Kingo, Beautiful Katamari, Bullet Witch, Ace Combat, Blue Dragon, Project Gotham. Let's go a year before that. Far Cry, Rumble Roses, The Outfit, Full Auto, Saints Row, Moto G, Tom Clancy. Come on. Come on, man. 99 Nights, Dead Rising. Now, I know what y'all thinking. MM2K. What the hell? That's not fair, brother. He, he came into control in 2009. But you got to get a brother like two or three years for what he, as the head of the studios, brought to fruition to really matter. Okay, well then let's do that then. I mean, let's look at <laughs> let's look at 2010 though for shits and giggles. 99 Nights 2, Crackdown 2, Halo Reach, Morph X, Naval Assault. You see something here? You notice how the list is shrinking. Let's go to 2011. Gears, Forza, some more Halo. Okay, let's go to 2012. More Forza, Halo, Aki Katana. 2013, Gears. 2014, dot, 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 dot. This man has never had an eye for the hardcore gamer in his heart. It was evident back then. I just showed you. Let me go back. Let me go back. I'm sorry. I just showed you a difference in year makes. Lost Odyssey, Cul-de-Sap, Two Human, Infinite Discovery. Come on. Fable 2. Just those. Kill everything in totality that has come after he's been the head of the studio. Yes. And then the list, list kept shrinking like it is now. So myth number one that has been debunked, people. That Phil Spencer had an eye for hardcore gaming. It was just that he was hamstrung. When Xbox was on top, baby, you saw the same pattern. It was nothing but Halo, Gears, and Forza and a, other, and a whole bunch of Ghibli gook. Mickey Dawn 2 says 2013 was the worst. Man. <laughs> Somebody said, you have awoken my son. <laughs> this is crazy, man. But again, we want to cap and make excuses and make up things that don't exist. Again, the myth that Phil Spencer has always had an eye for the hardcore, and it's just that now when this generation is hamstrung, has been debunked. As soon as he took over as head of the studios, you started to become you started to see a shrinkage in the quality of product, and it only focused when it came to AAA material on Halo Gears and Forza. 
The same exact thing you're seeing now in a totally different generation. Okay? Now, Another excuse is MM2K Phil Spencer was hamstrung, man. He was hamstrung. He didn't have a choice. It was rough, man. When he took over, it was it was horrible. Money wasn't there like they wanted it to be. Then you had Terry Myerson and all this other stuff, and man, he had it rough. He had it rough, rougher than anybody you can think of. He had it rough, and that's why it's rough for us now. It just gets, the excuses get worse. You want to know why? You want to know who had it worse than Phil Spencer? Do you really want to know who had it worse to Phil Spencer? A man by the name of Jack Trenton. Yes, you remember Jack Trenton, the guy that was in charge of PlayStation. At the time of the infamous hack, and at the time that PlayStation lost billions upon billions upon billions of dollars, they didn't have any money. But despite all that, he got games, first and second party, even timed exclusives during their time of hardship. What he couldn't get for first party, he got second party. Games like uh, uh, the Demon Souls and all the other games, the, the Heavy Rain and stuff like that. What's happened in our hardship as a response? We get told, I don't like providing you with exclusive content that other gamers can't opine in. I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm worried more about I'm worried more about everybody else in totality than I'm worried about you, the people that I'm hired to look over. I don't, I don't believe in that. I'm believing that during this hardship, you just you're just gonna have to deal with whatever I give you, and you take it or squeeze it. That's what we got. Also. Jack Trenton and his time of dire situation, he got on the E3 stage and said, you know what, guys? We're sorry. We didn't give you the level of quality that we should have given you. And we're going to make it up to you. It even got to the point to where they had a curator to do Kevin Butler to rally the troops to say, even though we're, 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 we're returning the wheel, back in the right direction until we fully get going we're here to pump you up we're here to let you know you're important to us we're here to speak to you and kevin butler became one of the most iconic individuals in gaming the kevin button kevin butler character he was just a fictional character that was put on the stage to help talk and promote the fact that they care about their hardcore brass. What do we get? A bunch of excuses. Well, we didn't know that you wanted to see Gears of War, five, Gears 5 on the big stage. How, how, we thought E3 was bigger than the stage. Oh. These sly, sarcastic, and snide responses to the constant cries of your hardcore. Well, um, when I said multiple schools, I, you know, the sad edition, I, that's multiple. Chuckle, chuckle, chuckle. Ain't nothing funny, Phil. Again, Jack Trenton, they didn't have any money. Sony didn't have any money. Jack Trenton in the time of need got up on stage. Put the money on the wood and said, you know what? We wasn't, we wasn't on our job. Whatever the case may be, we didn't purposely mean to do this. But the fact of the matter is we're not producing up to standard. Give us some time. 
Why are you giving us some time? I assure you, we're going to do the best that we can. But to let you know, we care about you. Let's talk about some things. Let's talk community. Let's talk hardcore community. Out comes this Kevin Butler character. And the things that he had to say, we reached across the aisle. And we can't even get our head in studios to even say the word hardcore. He's telling us that game to him is more than headshots and kills. We know that. But headshots and kills are part of it. So what you trying to purge us, Phil? So again, to debunk excuse and force and hyperbole number two, that Phil Spencer had it harder than anybody. He didn't have the resources or the ability to do the outreach that we're looking for. That's bullpucky. Jack Trenton at the aftermath of the hack and all the financial woes that Sony had, had it worse than Phil could even imagine. They had no damn money. And they still showed and proved for their hardcore. Phil and Microsoft is making more money from gaming than they ever have. There is no goddamn excuse that we can't get something in our, tangible in our hands now that we got to be in this perpetual state of weight. So that has been debunked. Again, you got something that you want your boy MM2K to cover? That you want me to speak of as well? Leave something in the free messaging app. There's a link down below on the page. There's also this link right here in the chat. You can leave something in the chat. I'll respond to it live on air. That way it pops in my eye and I can see it, okay? We gonna bring this puppy on home. Here's the, here, here, here's, so. Here's ultimately the issue with Phil. Here's ultimately the issue with Phil. That you can't trust a man as far as you throw him. You cannot trust what he says that comes out of his mouth. So you got to go by his actions. Now, I'm going to go over the most critical examples of why you cannot trust anything he says that you can only evaluate his actions. I'm going over it right now. Issue number one. He's, th this is not stumbling. This is not by accident. This isn't him learning what to do. I've showed you that Phil Spencer has been part of the Microsoft brass for a very long time. He knows how the things work. He knows what the core expect. It's just he doesn't care about it. He's on a mission, but he's not going to be honest with you about it. And the fact that whenever he's confronted with something that he may have had to change gears on by impulse, it doesn't, he's not messing up. He lies. He's impulsively deceptive. What are you talking about, MM2K? Exhibit number one. Remember when homie Phil Spencer said that Scarlet was going to be multiple consoles. He said it on E3 stage. There's no getting around it. There's no trying. There's no damage control in this. This. There's no capping this. There's going to be multiple consoles. Okay. No big deal. Because there ain't going to be any. A lot of people. There was a lot of back and forth. A lot of debate within the community. If that even made any sense. And again. A flaw of Microsoft is they like to talk about things in flight. And when I say in flight, I mean they like to talk about things in the, the, tr the, the tryout stages, you know, not in, in the rollout stage. You're really not supposed to talk about things until you're ready to roll it out. But Microsoft likes to go in big detail, likes to sell you on the hype too early. And they did it again this time. We're used to it. So again... And again, a lot of this stuff that was being said, 
you know, is before the official rollout, you could just be honest and say, hey, okay, I may have implied different consoles, but we believe to better suit and better, better satisfy the gamer that we had to narrow it down. I mean, all the reports and all the indication of why they did it makes sense. I think, I mean, I think overwhelmingly, those of us within the Xbox community that either like what Phil Spencer is doing or love what he's doing would agree that not having that second console doesn't make any sense, particularly if your main focus is on these 2 billion gamers, then give us our hardcore devices, focus on us purely. But again, he's impulsively deceptive. So instead of just saying something that made comments like that, like we realize after talking to our developers and stuff like that, and then looking at everything in totality, it didn't make sense to have multiple screws at this time. We're going to roll something out for the hardcore that's power packed for the hardcore. Um, and hopefully everybody enjoys it. Instead of saying that, here's what he says. Quote, last year, we said consoles and we've shipped a console talking about the Xbox ad and we now detailed another console. I, th I, I think that's plural. Technically it's plural. <laughs> what? What? So you're telling us that you can't get up on the stage and say, you know what? We may have spoken consoles because we were in the um, conception stage. Now that we're getting ready to roll things out and we're turning the corner, we've realized you, you can't do that. You can't even dodge the question. You have to be deceptive and try to find some way to say, well, we said consoles. So I guess we mean consoles because the sad edition applies. When you weren't talking about the sad, because all the sad is, is your attempt to sell the overstock of Xbox One S's that you couldn't sell, and you took out the hard drive, and you're still selling it for what, 250 It's a money grab that you're trying to disguise as, oh, we're trying to field test if somebody wants a, a, a discless car. Shut up! Shut the hell up! It was a money grab. But do you see what I'm saying? You ain't got a lot of kicking. You ever met someone that just lies just to lie? They lie for no reason. Those type of people are impulsively deceptive. Some of them may have nice grins and nice, nice limbo shirts, but whatever the aesthetics are, they're impulsively deceptive. So concept number, so concept number three, which is Phil is just stumbling. He doesn't know what, what's going on. He, he, he's, he's just, he just, he, he, he's just trying, he's learning on the job, but he's really trying, he doesn't understand. That's been debunked. It is a farce. He knows exactly what he's doing and he can't help it. It's impulsive. The next reason why that you can't trust Phil as far as you can throw him is because of the state of games. People are saying, hey, MM2K, stop it. He's hiring all these studios. He wouldn't be hiring these studios and then making these announcements, the AAA staff coming over to do this and that um, unless they were making AAA games. And again, in theory, if you were in charge and you weren't a deceptive, impulsively deceptive person, then yes, you wouldn't do that. But this is Phil. In the way I see it, unless until they prove otherwise, they're getting people that are heavily skilled in AAA games because if they're heavily skilled in AAA games, then shit, they should be able to crank out some AA games like it's nothing in the tune of four a year or at least seven every two years. 
A game is a game. And if your games are going directly to Game Pass, it doesn't matter the a la carte sales. You're doing this to load up your Game Pass sales. Right? Right. But just to debunk that myth, that Phil, is, he, has, he understands the standards of AAA games. And under his helm, he's letting the studios do what they want to do. So MM2K, you need to stop this right now. I bring you Exhibit C. <laughs> okay. Remember when Phil Spencer said that in 2017, there was going to be an epic lineup. Epic. Epic. Not, not, not just epic game store, but epic lineup. on MM2K all right maybe he wanted it to but you know that was just that, that hey look that was just a uh, an off-key year he didn't mean that this isn't a trend crackdown three when it got delayed to spring of 2018 here's what Phil Spencer had to comment on it says, we are very excited about Crackdown 3, and there's so many fans, it's difficult to call the move release date. Oh, that's what Loftus said. He says, no, I'm sorry. Phil Spencer said, it's always disappointing to move a date. We are very committed to shipping Crackdown 3 to the level of quality the fans deserve. <laughs> Big up to Hayaga, 2016, for following the channel. Crackdown 3 is what fans deserve. Okay, man, that was Crackdown 3. He was trying to give them full independent development ability because so they can facilitate the, the, the games at their at their level. This 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 isn't this isn't systematic. MM2K, you need to stop this garbage. He gives everybody full development freedom. I bring you to the final exhibit under this farce. Okay. This is the infamous Your Gamer uh, interview, okay? Well, Phil Spencer went back and forth with Your Gamer about the quality of the AAA lineup. I'm going to get to this section where he says, where he's asked, I like the look of see if these, and he gives his answer because that's very telling. But here's um, what he was asked in that interview. He says, the, the interviewer says from Eurogamer, you had a lot of games, which was great. But where were the big first party game announcements? And... Let's see here. I'm sorry, I'm getting I'm getting sounds. And do I have my alert box on? I don't think I have my alert box. I deeply apologize. Hold on. Let me uh let me do something real quick. Cause I need to add this alert box. It's essential. Okay. Let's add it. Yeah, I deep I, I apologize. And what the hell? Okay, I got the alert box here. Bear with me guys. My deepest apologies. I gotta add a couple of things here real quick. Alright. Cause these things should have been in here already. Enable. And okay, whatever, whatever's clever. And then we're going to enable this too. All right. I deeply apologize. There were some alerts that were coming through that I missed um, because my alert box wasn't on. But now I officially have my alert box on. Let me just test it out. Um, follow. 
Okay, we got it. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. Sorry about that. Okay. And let me just make sure that's been transitioned over. All right, so here's the deal. Okay, so Phil was asked. You had a lot of games, which was great, but where were the big first-party game announcements? Phil says, so our first-party game announcements on stage were Forza 7. And the guy says, okay, 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 I get it. I get it. But we knew about Forza. It's, it was a known quantity, that one. Phil Spencer responds, well, it, it was our announce. You can take it away from me, but it was my announce. Ori, and which looked fantastic, Super Lucky's Tale, did you see that? <laughs> and the guy's like, hold on. I'm talking more about than Phil cuts in. You're not liking my answer. Okay, what do you want us to show? And the dude's like, come on, hey, bro, stop playing with me, man. Stop playing with me. I, I know you haven't eaten lead chips. You seem like a smart guy. Come on, stop playing with me. He says, you know what I mean. Triple A, big Microsoft party games. Phil Spencer says, well, you think, let me highlight this. Well, you think see your thieves is that, right? Shit, I almost fell out of my chair. My, my sugar diabetes went up to a thousand. The back of my neck is sweating. You think Sea of Thieves is that right? Now again, nothing against anybody that likes Sea of Thieves. We're simply talking about classifications and this myth that those of us that are asking for triple A, banger exclusives, new IP, that under the helm of Phil, we're going to get those. So we need to shut up and stop all this complaining. Here you have it. We're Phil Spencer at the release, not now, even though to me it's still dog shit, but at the release of Sea of Thieves. That to him, that was the AAA banger that everybody was waiting for. Right? Right. But hold on, it gets even better. It gets even better because you know what? You know what else these Phil stands say? They say, but MM2K. Phil, you know what? That was then. This is now. And Phil's going to give people full control over their property as they develop it. So you need to just shut the hell up. Okay. All right. So in this part of the same interview, the guy from Eurogamer asked Phil. He said, okay. He starts off and says, let's talk about the games. They were doing a whole bunch of bibble babble. And Phil Spencer says, responds, well, what was your favorite? And the guy says, well, I like the look of, I like the look of Sea of Thieves. And out of enthusiasm, because again, this is AAA quality to him. So he's excited. And when Phil gets excited, he says stuff out of order. See, you got to pay attention to what Phil likes. Pay close attention to that because I'm going to follow up with that in my next point. Phil Spencer, when he gets excited, he talks out of order. Phil Spencer says, love it in regards to Sea of Thieves. My direction to the team early on was I wanted to see it from the eyes of a single player. What we, sh what we shown was the group experience. Working with Craig Duncan of Rare Studio and team and said, I said, let's try to give the view of one player through an experience off the ship. And we did underwater stuff. I repeat, love it. My direction to the team. That does not sound like development independence. Again, you can't trust Phil's for you can throw him. You go off the actions. The action so much isn't the words, but the fact that he likes to speak out of order when he's excited. He spoke out of order here. He revealed to y'all that even though they were saying that Rear had full development Freedom, he let you know in this interview that his direction, 
His direction to them is that this got to be first person. And my direction to the team early on was, meaning that there was a possibility there was more direction. I follow up that point with this. I believe it was Craig Duncan. Somebody from Rare went on the MNC show with Mooch and Crap. It was during that time that that individual revealed that the reason why that Sea of Thieves had his cartoony look is because they were thinking about fidelity for tablets and phones. And also that's why they implemented the 480p mode. Because at some point in time, Sea of Thieves is going to be part of the X Cloud. Which, so they developed this thing from the ground up with Phil's direction to the team for the cartoony look and a less focus on fidelity and more focus on compatibility. So, when you take everything in totality, everybody that's spitting this hyperbole that Phil gives you um, uh, creative direction. He gives you creative freedom. He lets them do what they want to do. That has been debunked. My direction to the team early on was right there in the pudding. You combine that again with what that individual, I can't I think it was Craig Duncan, what they said on the MNC show, that they were focused on 480p. Do you think real gives a shit about what's going on phones and tablets? That's a Microsoft initiative. That came from Phil. Again, MM2K, you need to stop worrying. These new studios and all the acquisitions of these AAA people mean that there's going to be a whole slew of AAA games. Phil said, Phil said, Phil said he's going to give you creative freedom. Well, Phil said he gave rare creative freedom and he spoke out of order and he exposed himself. So that is the bump. Again, if you have something that you want to put forth, lay it here in the free messaging app. Free of charge. It'll catch my eye because I'm going over a lot of screens, as you can see. And I'll definitely read it on air and we'll talk about it. It helps out the channel. I appreciate it. You know, as I appreciate all of y'all straight up. <laughs> but y'all going, going to get this goddamn gospel today. Next thing. Phil don't like telling people about games or stuff early because Phil wants us to be surprised like we're 13 years old. We ain't, we're adults and we can't handle the, the, the truth. We can't handle things out of order. So Phil has to facilitate it to us because we don't know what's good for us, MM2K. So you need to shut the hell up. And I tell you, that's bullpucky. Phil ain't holding back on anything because it's out of order. As I just showed you, Phil speaks out of order out of time. Exhibit D. Phil Spencer says Xbox One X still supports VR. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so the story reads, Spencer told CNET on Tuesday that Xbox One X fully support virtual reality and that their commitment to it hasn't changed. While Spencer didn't mention VR on the stage during uh, Sunday's presentation, which was in 2017, he stands by what he said a year ago that when Microsoft teased a console that pro as Project Scorpio, it gave the impression it would support virtual reality. This comment refutes an early story from Wall Street Journal that the console wouldn't support virtual reality. So again, 
speaking out of order, speaking as initiatives are in flight before they are in the rollout to get you excited, to get you in. There's a lot of hardcore stuff coming in M2K. You need to shut the hell up. And then they always go pew. Fashion and Wally Coyote off the goddamn cliff. Phil speaks out of order when he's excited about stuff. He was excited about VR. He was willing to tell you about it as soon as they planned on trying to develop for it. MM2K, that's just VR. You ain't got nothing else, man. Shut up. Exhibit E. Xbox boss Phil Spencer talks gaming beyond generations. In this article, Xbox head Phil Spencer is talking about how Xbox is looking to do the no gamer left behind thing to where your software is going to be compatible on Xbox One and future consoles ongoing. Remember that? They weren't going to leave any consoles behind officially starting with the Xbox One. And what do we got going here? So, and that was an example of forwards compatibility. Now we have Mike Yabari. He went on a podcast. Other people went on multiple podcasts, right? And they said, hey, and they did multiple interviews and they said, hey, well, we're looking at ways of trying to still support the Xbox One family as we go into this new generation. Now they're talking about generations again. Again, an example of Phil speaking out of order when he's excited. But let me go. Big ups to Snow Bunny. Thank you, sweetheart, for dropping something in the free messaging app. Snow Bunny says, now you see why. You have to read what is being said and what's being done, I believe she meant, and not being said. Now you see why I am so cynical. Absolutely. Absolutely, Snow Bunny. And to repent for my sins, your boy MM2K is scheduled to do an appearance on the Roundtable podcast featuring your boy King Thrash and company. You don't want to miss it. To repent for my sins, your boy MM2K. Now again, that doesn't mean that I'm saying that I'm officially PlayStation. I'm not officially anything. I'm officially a gamer. And each of these companies have to sell me on their product going into next generation. I am currently invested in Xbox, so I'm going to stick with what I got. I got Xbox and PC. I am very interested to see what's going on. But there's a lot of capping that I did in faith of Xbox, and I'm going to repent for my sins tonight on the Roundtable podcast, as long as they have it. So if you're not following King Thrash, follow his channel or follow the Roundtable podcast. I will be there. But thank you, Snow Bunny, for that comment. With that being said, so again, to recap on this whole myth that film don't want to show you nothing early MM2K. You need to put the crack pipe in love and stop woozing and stop talking all this garbage. You just need to wait. He doesn't talk about stuff before it's about to come out, man. Shut up. Again. He spoke out of order with VR. He spoke out of order when it came to cross generations and forward uh, compatibility. I also showed you an example earlier when he spoke out of order about there being multiple schools and, and his impulsive deceptiveness about that. So, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. He speaks out of order and he says stuff early all the time when he's excited. He's not excited, nor does he really care 
to show you new AAA IPs. So that's why he's not talking about it. So that has been debunked. Last but not least. <sighs> Microsoft has us in this perpetual state of wait, right? They have it to where um, we're always waiting for the next big thing coming around the corner, right? It's coming. MM2K, it's coming. You just wait. Stop being so damn impatient. Phil said it's coming. And it only makes sense that it's coming out the next E3 or the next Games Con or the next Tokyo show or the next uh, uh, Con Air movie. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. And again, the final point that I want to make is that what Phil has done with everybody is that he's masterfully put you and sold you on a perpetual state of weight. That's all it is. Exhibit and my final exhibit, exhibit F. Here's every goddamn line from Phil Spencer in regards to why E3 was going to blow the socks off and have you jumping out of your goddamn skin, jump in a pit and lava and sins to death that it was so goddamn exciting that you couldn't take it. You were just going to take your life. That's the way he was promoting it. And it, that goes beyond marketing because you're now at a state where, again, your brass is thirsty for what you provided before that put you at the top of the mountain last generation. And that had you open eyes the generation before that. You know this. So you talk to their heartstrings by promising them this stuff is coming, but it's never coming. Exhibit F. Let me, let me, let me just increase this for you in case you can't see. 2014. New Xbox boss Phil Spencer says E3 2014 will have the best lineup in a long time. <laughs> 2015. Microsoft to have the greatest games lineup in Xbox history. Huh? It was it was it was better. It was better. It, it wasn't even better than 2008. It wasn't even better than 2008. But again, Xbox, they have the greatest lineup in 2015 in Xbox history. He said this out of his mouth. 2016, Xbox head Phil Spencer. E3 2016 could be one of our most special years ever. It wasn't even better than 2008. 2017. Xbox in 2017, Phil Spencer promises more exclusive games than in 2016. I, don't, I think 2017 was worse than 2016, right? 2018, Xbox One game news. E3 2018 will be Microsoft's biggest Xbox show ever. It wasn't better. It, I could pull out a handful of goddamn shows from last generation that was better. Stop! In 2019, Phil Spencer is going big for E3 2019 to te te teases unannounced games and X Cloud progress. And that's putting it lightly. He said, We are going big. He said, We're going big. And, and, and started to fancy you on all of the games that were coming out. I remind
remind you after each of these statements that he has made. Xboxes in any of them years was not better than 2008, the year before he took over the studio. It wasn't. No year was better than 2008. I'm not even going back to the, and, I, and, and that wasn't even a powerhouse year. That was a slacking year in pre fill standards. That was a slacking year. But I'm going to the year, excuse me, right before he was fully in charge of Xbox Studios. That year was better than any year to date. For Xbox. You see, you see it. You see it. You see this. You see this. Even lips got down is better than most of the shit we got this year. You see this. So again, Xbox brass. Every single false notion that you're trying to make excuses for to cap for Phil Spencer have been debunked. With this last one, just wait till next E3. Phil Spencer is trying his best to bring us something, but it only makes sense that is coming at each, we hear that each E3, and he lies expeditiously about each E3. None of the E3s, none of the lineups for this generation are better than 2008. By pre Phil Spencer standards, 2008 was a lackluster year for the 360. Nothing, no lineup this, this generation is better than 2008. So let's go over it. Let's go over everything in totality. Item number one. I just showed you. Let's look at what he's provided since he's taken over. It's the same thing we're seeing now. It's the same thing we're seeing now. So that's been debunked. The Phil got all, he, he has a ground to the air. It's just give him the opportunity and he'll provide us the hardcore games. Ever since he took our weed, this has been a downward trend since he's taken over the studios. And y'all wanted to give him credit? Y'all didn't want to get no credit to Donnie D. Everything is going to get credited to Phil. So let's get the credit to Phil for this downfall. Phil had it rough, man. MM2K, shut up. Ain't nobody had it rough than Jack Trenton. He ain't, had a, he ain't had a Jack Trenton rough. They were selling lampshades and all the disposables out of the refrigerator in the, in the cafeteria. They had no money. They lost $5 billion. And look what they did at the end of the generation in comparison to what we're doing at the end of the generation. And, and Microsoft is making more money off of gaming than they ever did. None of their, none of their lineups are better than 2008. And they're making more money than they ever did. Jack Trenton got first party games. Where the first party games weren't ready. He made second party deals. We were told by Phil Spencer, man, forget those second party. I'm not, I'm not working that way for y'all. I don't believe it. I don't believe in it working for y'all. That's going to take st stuff from other people that I'm not responsible for. So you're not getting it. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. Speak to the hardcore gamer. That's what Jack Trenton did. They even, they even made a goddamn character. Kevin Butler came out there, got everybody excited, got, got people excited. They didn't even, that wasn't even part of PlayStation. Got him excited. Phil Spencer, you can't even get this man to say hardcore. I think his head would explode like that Klansman character on Dave Chappelle if, if Phil Spencer ever said the word hardcore. I think his head would burst and meat chunks would fly everywhere. Then let's go to the biggest deception part of Phil Spencer. 
Phil Spencer, man. These are, these are just stumbles, man. No, it's impulsive. The whole multiple scoops thing, how he responded to that. Oh, man, Phil Spencer knows it was Triple A. Just give, just give him a chance. He's going to give the studios freedom, freedom to do what they need to do. Crackdown is going to be on the level of Halo Gears and Forza. And he claimed that he gave rare uh, creative freedom, but we busted him in that lie. My direction to the team was. Man, Phil Spencer, he just don't want to show anything early. He wants to wait until it's ready to come out of the oven. Well, then explain VR. No gamers left behind with no more generations and forward compatibility and multiple Scarlet Scoots. When he said consoles. He's simply not excited about AAA games. So that's why he's not talking about it now, because that's, that's not his focus. That's not his goal. We could, ah, uh, shit. The, the, the Fable may have never been ready. This is we jank Fable. Never, may have never been ready. He cared not to even show on the splash screen about Fable. That probably was never in the works. And lastly, no, they're gearing up. Trust me, it's going to be the next show and the next show and the next show is going to be great. Trust me. He has you in a perpetual state of wait. A perpetual state of wait. That's what it is. Look at it. Look. We will have the best lineup in a long time. It's not better than 2008. We're going to have the greatest line, games line. That one is a, that, that's a doozy. If that don't tell you anything, if you still want to cap and believe that this man isn't dishonest, dishonest beyond average for a business person. I get that business people always do shucking and, you know, and, 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 and a lot of uh, uh, foul stuff, but he's beyond that. You're in dire need and you're just lying, lying, lying on top of lies. Microsoft had the greatest games lineup in Xbox history. It's not better than 2008. E3 2016 could be one of our sp most special years ever. Man, shut up. More exclusive games than in 2016. E3 2018 will be the biggest show ever. Come on, and, and, and then this year, we're, we're going big. Like, stop it. Stop. So here's the fact of the matter, people. Here's the fact of the matter. You win stands, you feel sympathizers, you like them soft gamers. There ain't no better way to tell you but to tell you. You can slurp and burp this guy all you want. Till you can't wipe it off your chin till it's stuck like, oh. I'm going to just tell you guys this. He doesn't care about hardcore gamers. He is not suited to be in charge of a hardcore brand, which Xbox is. So, being that you've been fully exposed, this is directly to Phil, and this is for a stance to just deal with too, while they're on their knees. Phil, you either announce your true intentions, right? Or bounce. Let Mike your ball do the game of justice. Let him do let him do let him do the gamers justice. Don't keep us in deceit anymore. Let us know. Hey, look, let us know that you're trying to purge what we're about. That you loathe the hardcore aspects of it. That you just want to keep the three, maybe four AAA games that you have. Maybe ever, maybe you might experiment every you know, seven, eight, ten years with something. You might experiment. But your goal is not to build the lineup with a consistent flow of AAA games, like how we've expected or like how Sony's even announced. That's not your MO. That you're doing a reverse Donnie D. If you're looking for those triple, a cons consistent drip of those AAA bangers, we, we, we support a console like that for you. It's called the PlayStation 5. <laughs> and we support them by having PlayStation now on our Azure servers. I mean, just come out and say it, man. Because as long as you keep the charade up, then we're going to keep our foot on your neck. And win stands. 
Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. I'm just say it. I gave this comparison before. Let's just say I'm a tw- I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of Toyota cars. I, I, me and my wife, we have a Corolla. So let's just say our, we love our Corolla. But you bought a Camry. Camry's all messed up and jacked up. And I'm at, I'm at a car convention, a Toyota car convention. And you're sitting there complaining about your Camry and how they haven't fixed it or, or the recalls ain't been out. And I stand up and I say, shut, hey, you, you shut up. I'm enjoying my Corolla. They said they're going to fix it eventually. And because I'm enjoying my Corolla, you need to sit down and shut the hell up. Number one, that is self-centered and is selfish in a way that goes beyond anything that has brought game to where it's at right now. We've always respected our individuality and we've always respected fellow gamers. We may have been competitive, but we've had respect whenever the default mantras of gaming were being violated. And you're doing all this for the name of Phil. And secondly, it's stupid. Because if they can get away with it with them, then guess who's next? Stop being stupid. Slurp and burp to your own demise. <laughs> that heartburn's going to be serious by the time you're done. Trust me. Trust me. I don't know about experience, but... Trust me, you you gonna wish you didn't do that. And I said from your boy MM2K, man. So again, I don't want to hear nothing about it's coming down the road because we've been told that forever. I don't want to hear that it's been too hard. I don't want to hear that it's just a mistake. I don't hear you you trust and feel or whatever. It's all been exposed. And I get why you guys are doing it. Y'all just hate PlayStation. Most of y'all just hate PlayStation or y'all are too settled into what's going on now to where you don't want to look down the road. You just want to focus on now. I'm enjoying Pew Pew on right now. But eventually it's going to come to you too. If they, This is only the start. You give, you, you give a Fortune 500 company an inch, they're going to take them out. And then there's a, the third, the, the, the third uh, round that truly be, that still will not believe that Phil has a dishonest bone in his body, that he may have just simply stumbled and made some mistakes, that this is not intentional. And again, like I said, a lot of you are smarter than that, but you're stuck in this belief. You're just being hard-headed, and it's going to come to bite you in the long run. And I guess we'll cross that bridge once we get there. But again, I don't want to hear nothing about MM2K. Stop your whining. Stop your complaining. I have the receipts <laughs> on every on reason why I'm I'm headed down the correct path, and you're not. Now, if you I, again, I have nothing against anybody that wants to stay on that path, but don't come over here telling me that I need to do something stupid and just go go with the flow, because I just showed why it was stupid. I've eliminated every single cap, every single response, uh, every single response cap and fulfill that there is. And if you truly want better for Microsoft in the long term, you're going to put your foot on his neck too, regardless of how you feel right now. I'm fine playing my Xbox One X right now, but I'm looking for the long term. And you're going to either put your foot on his neck and force him to do better, or you're going to say, hey, your, your, your position isn't golden. Bring in Mike, your ball. See, this ain't about Xbox hate. I don't hate Xbox. I don't like what's going on here. And last but not least, let me say this. I think one of the falsest analogies that are being made is in regards to sports. Because people are saying, multiple people, I'm hearing this everywhere. I have a sports team and I love my sport and I, and I, and I, and I stick with my sports team and I'm, I'm going to stick with Xbox just like people stick with PlayStation. Let me, nobody should ever do that. And I know they do it on both sides, but we shouldn't do that as well. Be, and, and that's a false analogy. Even when you stick with a sports team, you're sticking with a sports team. You pick a team, this, you pick a team for different reasons why you pick a game or a gaming e- ecosystem. You pick a team either because they represent your local area or you pick a team just because you may like the colors or you may like certain players there. But you're sticking with the team because the purpose of a sports team is for them to attempt to win. So when that sports team shows up one day and they say, look, 
we, we're officially letting you know we ain't trying to win no more. We just want to be around so you can come to our stadiums, buy hot dogs, buy, uh, you know, buy the beer, and you can watch as other players come to our stadium. Okay? We're, we're hiring double-A players. We're not even going for it because we don't want to spend them. We're trying to absorb and retain as much money as possible. Will we be at the draft to give you hope? Yeah, we'll be at the draft to give you hope. But as far as us making an investment in the top tier people or anybody at all, again, nope, forget about it. If your favorite sports team were to tell you that, you would be out quicker than you say, hell no. And those of you that will, would still stay, just because you're okay with the idea of your team never attempting to win at all, that they're always going to lose forever, and it just provides you a, a, a local opportunity to go and see other stores, that's fine. But don't you dare come to me. If I'm arguing in that scenario and say, I want y'all to compete, I want y'all to win, because when you win in the right areas, I win as well for making investment into you. Do not come to me and expect me to shut up because you want to be a flunky. So that's why I say that a sports analogy makes no sense. You're invested in a product, which is the team winning. And if you're not invested in that, then you're just, you're just looking to belong. <laughs> if you want to belong, that's fine. I don't care. I don't care what, 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 what pushes people. But what I do care is that people wanting me to be a flunky like them. And that's not happening. So that's why we have this channel here. I urge everybody to please come on board. If you are fanatical or if you do have a like towards hardcore gaming, sign up, subscribe, follow. We're going to highlight hardcore gaming. We're going to put on the spotlight. We're going to do our best to keep it intact. And we're also going to point out those that, that are doing things like this. This is, this is absurd and this is ridiculous. And I'm not talking about the people capping for this. I had to have a podcast to explain why I come from my approach, I, why I don't want to hear no more, why I will vigorously shoot it down, shoot the BS down. I don't want to hear it anymore. This guy's full of bullpucky. And he needs a foot on his neck. Now, if you want to accept and you want to eat the raccoon food, if you want to eat the garbage, that's fine with you. I don't care. But believe you me, I'm going to stand up and say something. But my biggest target is on Phil. This is unacceptable. This is not right. And you can definitely do better. And you, as a businessman, you're getting paid good money. You got to learn how to walk and chew gum too. If Jack Trenton could do it, God damn it, you could do it too. And that's it from your boy, MM2K. With that said, I want to thank everybody that came out here. Let me go through the chat real quick. He Stevens. Rage Knot. Graphic God. Paul G. Pikachu. Peacock. Pandafall. Snow Bunny. And uh, Mika the Dawn too. Bit W eleven. Shy two four zero eight. What's up? And Lil Shadia twenty six. And I appreciate all of y'all for coming out, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Again, Phil Sp the danger that is Phil Spencer. That is the current Phil Spencer. I put the word current in there for a reason. I put the word current in there because we can force change, but it requires us in totality, even though if we're happy with the state of Xbox now, that we, we don't turn a blind eye to all this stuff. I, I'm not the one saying that in 2015, Microsoft is going to have the game, the greatest games lineup. That, I didn't say that he did. We got to hold him account wholeheartedly for this stuff and tell him that if he doesn't do better for the long term, that 
You know what I'm saying? We, we're we're going to force change. If you don't want to be part of that message, that's fine. But do not come over here in this lane because with that bull with that bull crap trying to cap because it's going to get shot down. You you're more than welcome to do it. I'm, when I say don't do it, I'm saying don't come over and expect that it's just going to get let go. It's not going to get let go. We're, we're going to rebut it. We're going to respond it, respond to it, and we're going to respond to it with the truth. So don't be in your fields when, when we expose all this capping. You know what I'm saying? With that said, I appreciate everybody for showing up. Thank you very much. Stay tuned. We got more stuff coming. We got. I'm, I'm, I'm debating if I'm going to do an anime show or martial arts show this week. We also got more game streams. I got. I'm doing Rage 2, Division, and some other things. Leave a suggestion in the suggestion box if you want me to do other games. You know what I'm saying? We got more stuff coming. And stay tuned to the schedule on this channel or follow me at uh, Twitter. You know what I'm saying? At MM2K. Because as the schedule changes, I will post it out there. With that said, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. I enjoyed doing this. And we're going to keep the fight going strong. And with that said, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.